In this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this adorable Blue's Clues cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you'd like to learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. So like I just said, I'm going to show you how to decorate this adorable Blue's Clues cake. And I am starting with my cake already baked, filled, and iced. And I do have videos showing you how I bake, fill, and ice cakes. And I will link that in the description. And I also wanna let you know all of the tools that I use and other videos that go into deeper detail of the techniques that I do in this video will be linked in the description. So let's get started. All right, before I print out anything, I want to measure my cake and see how much room I have on the top and how much I have up the side so I know how big to print everything. Now I have a piece of non-skid pad underneath my cutting board so it doesn't slide around, a wet paper towel that I can wipe my X-Acto knife on, a Dresden tool, a little bit of water and a paintbrush, and I printed out the decorations I want. I rolled out this fondant pretty thick. It's not super thin, it's not super thick, but I have all the colors I need and all of this fondant that I'm using has Tylos powder mixed into it. The Tylos is going to help it set hard and it's going to be a lot easier to cut. Make sure you don't press too hard when you're tracing here with your tool. I'm using the curved end and I am just tracing the outline of the bucket. And then make sure you get all the inner details as well. And I'm just gonna make a little uh, mark where the eyes and the mouth are gonna go, peel it back. And I'm just gonna take my tool and deepen that center part of the bucket. And now since this is thicker fondant, I'm always gonna make a shallow cut first. That way I have a line that I can use as a guide. I'm not gonna mess up the fondant. Once I have the shallow cut, I stick the knife all the way down to the cutting board and cut it out. Every single time that I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to take the time and smooth my cuts and deepen any of the details that are lost while I'm smoothing. And I'm literally going to repeat this process the, for the entire cake. So I find the color that I need, I trace it, I do a shallow cut, and then I cut the entire thing out. And then smooth my cuts. So I want the shovel to have a little bit of depth. So I'm just using tools to press it down. And then this has to sit inside of the bucket. So I just want to cut a little piece out of there. And look, that fits in there perfectly. And repeating the process again, tracing the white part, cutting it out, smoothing my cuts. And I just want to cut a little hole on the either side so that the handle fits on there and then just cut a piece out of the handle so everything is just going to lie flat. Now, same thing. This is thinner fondant for the mouth for the red and the yellow. So I'm just doing the same thing. And now I have a little bit of petal dust and a tiny paintbrush, and I'm just going to color it in. I like to wipe my brush off on the paper first because this color really transfers. And you see, I'm looking at the picture and just try to, trying to shade it in to look like the picture. And for the shovel, I'm using some terracotta petal dust. All of the tools that I use or something similar will be linked in the description. And get a little bit of water behind the mouth. And for the eyes, I'm gonna use an edible marker. And I just like to stick the tip in and then twist it. It makes a perfect little dot. And for the eyebrows, just lightly press down and write the eyebrows on. And I just want to get a little bit of water uh, where the piece is going to touch so it sticks. And perfect, let's set that aside. Now I'm gonna make the number. I have a thicker piece of pink fondant 
and I same thing so I printed out this three the size that I wanted to be and I'm going to trace the entire thing and then make a shallow cut first since it's a thicker piece of fondant and then use that line as a guide to, to cut the entire thing out and this three I hate threes <laughs> they're so annoying because there's these little crevices here do you see how I'm kind of peeling the fondant away like I'm sticking the knife down and I'm working in little spurts just so I don't mess it up And you can see how ugly the fondant looks after I make the cuts. So I just like to use my fingers, use my tools. Why did I say it like that? Tools <laughs> to smooth the cuts. And what I'm doing, I just basically press the fondant back down on itself just so it doesn't look so jagged. So once I have it completely cut out, flip it over from the back, push the fondant back down, smooth it out, and then flip it over on the front and do the same thing. Now I want to get a skewer in. I want to twist it in there. Do not jab it in. You're going to mess up the number. <laughs> so I can't stick it up the middle. You're going to be able to see it. So I have to stick it over to the right a little bit. See how I'm putting it directly in the center. Flip it over. Twist and push the skewer in. And make sure that it's not popping out the top or the bottom. And I'm going to set that aside. Now let's make blue. So I rolled out the blue fondant a little thicker. I got some Crisco on that paper, so that's why it looks a little greasy. <laughs> but I'm gonna do the same thing. So I am tracing it, all the outlines, and then I'm actually deepening these lines with my Dresden tool. And this isn't necessary to do it with all of the lines, but I couldn't see. So I just wanted to deepen them. And now I'm pressing the mouth in because I need to put a piece in there. And I am tracing the mouth onto this thinner piece of pink fondant. Get a little bit of water behind it and stick that down. That's why I pressed the blue fondant down first so, so the pink fondant would lie flat. And now I have that darker blue and I'm going to do the same thing. So it's trace, cut, and smooth. I want to trace all the polka dots that I want, cut them all out, smooth my cuts, and I'm not gonna get water behind it first. I'm just gonna place it down just to make sure I'm getting these in the right spot. And then I need to do the nose and the paw. And I'm just using a small piping tip to cut out the little parts of the paw. And same thing for the eyes. Trace it, smooth it, you know the process. These small pieces are a little annoying to work with. <laughs> All right, now, since this is thicker fondant, like I said before, I need to make my shallow cut first. And once that's done, then I stick the tip all the way down to the board and cut the entire thing out. Flip it over, smooth it from the back with my fingers and my tools. And then flip it to the front and do the same. Do you see the, there's a pattern here. I do the same thing for all of these decorations. Now I have some blue petal dust. I will try to find these colors and link them below. And I am just using that tiny paintbrush and trying to color in those lines and shade it in a little bit to get, give it a little depth. And now let's get a little bit of water behind all the spots and put those on. And I have a blue edible marker that I can use for the eyebrows. And I want to realign him on top of the picture to make sure that he is in the right position. And I want to get a skewer in there. So again, I'm making sure that where I can stick it in so you won't be able to see the skewer. Twist and push, flip it over, make sure it's not poking out either side. Realign it and let's set that aside. Now, 
Going to do the same exact thing for this little soap guy. So I'm tracing the outline. Make sure I trace the inner parts. By the way, this purple is made with some cornflower blue and regal purple. Just a little bit of each to get this shade. And then I want to press with my ball tool to get like that centerpiece indented. And then same thing, do my shallow cut and then cut the entire thing out. And then I am tracing the mouth onto light pink fondant and put the mouth on. And then same thing, I want to draw the eyes and the eyebrows on using my elbow marker. Having the picture close for reference. Realign him on top, stick him on a cutting board, set him aside. Same exact thing for the name. Now I printed out this name. I can't remember the name of this font, but I will find it and link it below. And I printed out the size that I wanted it to be, trace it. And when I cut these letters out, always cut the center pieces first. It makes it so much easier. Then you cut the entire letter out, smooth it out, stick it on top of the name just so it's lined in the correct position and do that for all the letters. Now I want to put this on a light pink background, so I'm getting a little bit of water behind each letter and sticking them all down. And then I'm going to cut them out individually. Again, I'm cutting the centerpiece first, and then I want to cut an even border the entire way around all of the letters. And now I want to put those on a dark blue background, but this time I want to line the letters up in a row. And then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and cut an even border the entire way around all of the letters. And I'm going to stick this on a cake dummy the size of the cake I'm putting it on and set that aside to dry. Now I have white fondant. I've never made this guy before, so I'm, I'm doing this. I'm figuring it out as I go. <laughs> so I'm just going to do the same thing. I printed out the size I wanted to be, trace it onto the white fondant, and I'm doing it just like I did blue. So I'm pressing the mouth in, and I am cutting out the black part. For the mouth and look it's a little too big so i want to measure how much i have to cut off cut that piece off and now it fits on there perfectly get a little bit of water behind it and now i can stick that down and the tongue will go there i so i traced it and cut it out the nose i traced it and cut it out so i'm just doing the same thing the eyes you saw me do before i did the same exact way trace and cut and i'm going to set those aside now shallow cut to get my line and then I'm going to cut the entire white piece out. And I just want to deepen the details. And now I have my airbrush machine. I will find this and link it below. There's a power switch, the dial to control the spray. And I have a bunch of different colors, all the colors of the rainbow, the stuff you need gloves. And I'm just going to have the picture handy and I'm just going to reference the picture and try to color it in as best as I can. So I always keep a paper towel handy and I'm just, do you see how I'm getting the sides of the piece as well? Because this is a thicker piece. So I'm spraying the sides and then also going to spray the top. And I am just looking at the picture and seeing, okay, it's red here. It's red here. So I need to spray red in these areas and you can control the pressure with that dial and how far you pull back the trigger of the gun. The closer you spray to the piece, the more defined the line will be. If you pull the gun away, it'll be more of a spray. So you have to find a happy medium here. It's, it's a little difficult because I don't want the colors bleeding all over the piece. And I did put this on a turntable, makes it so much easier to turn it around. 
And in between me using the colors, you don't see me doing this, but I empty all the color out of the gun by pulling the trigger all the way back, run it under hot water, fill the cup with hot water and completely rinse the entire thing out so no colors are bleeding together. And that looks good. Let's set him aside so he can dry. Now I wanna make a bunch of different polka dots and curlies in some pinks and blues. So to make the curlies, I cut one straight line and then two squiggly lines on either side. I have a curly addiction. I have a video showing you how I make these. I'll link it and then I wrap it around my Dresden tool and then let it sit. And you have to have Tylos powder mixed into your fondant so that it holds its shape. So I'm just doing this all in a bunch of different colors. Now I wanna make the bottom border. So I roll it into a log and flatten it out, roll it really long. And then I have my ribbon cutter. I can make it however wide I want it to be. I will link this below and cut a strip out, get my cake out of the fridge. I'm gonna mark where the back of the cake is. That's where I want the seam to be. Get a wet paper towel and clean the cake board. And then get some piping gel in the very back where it's gonna meet. Piping gel is really gonna hold it on there. And then I just put Crisco around the rest of the perimeter. Crisco is really forgiving and I can adjust the border as needed where it meets in the back, cut a seam, press it together and then I like to use my palette knife to press it back down on the cake board so there's no gaps. And now I need to put the nose and the eyes on this guy and I'm putting the tongue on. I did get water behind that, you didn't see me do it. I'm not just sticking it on there. <laughs> and then I have some pink dust and I'm shading in the tongue and some a green marker and I'm giving him some green eyebrows. And let's set him aside. And I totally forgot I need to uh, make the little uh, inside parts of the paw. So I just use a piping tip and cut out circles and sticking a toothpick in the bottom of the three. That way it's not going to twist when I put it on top of the cake. Get some piping gel where the toppers are going to touch the cake. And I also want to put a little toothpick in that other paw so it doesn't twist when I put it in the cake. So I'm sliding them down where the ear meets the three. I'm going to get a little bit of icing behind it, squeeze that together. And that way it's going to help secure it. And then I'm just holding these decorations against the cake saying, where's this gonna look best? This looks good here, this fits here. So I'm going to get a little bit of icing behind that little rainbow puppy where it's gonna touch the cake and then press it onto the cake. And same thing for the pail and the shovel. And I got a lot, a lot of people asking me how you secure heavy objects to cakes. So I have half a toothpick. I'm angling it down. Do you see how I put it down into the cake? It's going to help anchor it on there. So I got a little bit of icing behind it and press it down in there. That toothpick and the icing behind there is really going to help secure it and it's not going to just fall off the cake. Now the name, it's going to stick up over the top a little bit. So I only want to get icing and piping gel on the bottom part of the name. So I put some icing down, a little bit of piping gel. I don't know why I use both. I just, I don't know. <laughs> I was feeling it. So, and then press it against the cake. And now I need to make the little bubbles. So I'm just ripping off little pieces of the purple fondant in different sizes and rolling them into little balls. And then I ended up putting the polka dots and the curlies in a bag because I didn't do, I'm not doing this until the next day. I didn't want them to dry out. I like to cut my polka dots in half. So I have a flat edge so I can use the flat edge at the top and the bottom of the cake and then put the polka dots around the middle. So that's just something I like to do with polka dots. You don't have to do that, but I just like to do it. And I'm getting water behind all those and sticking them on. And then I'm getting some piping gel underneath all of the little bubbles and sticking the bubbles underneath the soap. And now I wanna stick the curlies on. So I'm just getting a little bit of piping gel behind all these curlies and just sticking them on the top of the cake and on the cake board. 
And finally, I just want to get a ribbon around the board. So I'm measuring the ribbon, I'm flattening the aluminum foil, and then I get a little bit of glue around the perimeter. There's glue on the back of that ribbon and wrap it around there. And where it overlaps, get some more glue down, press it against the board, and there is the cake. So there you go, how cute is this cake? This is actually one of my most popular designs and I kinda, I've done it so much, I kinda wish that people would let me do something else <laughs> because I've made this one so many times. But at least this time I got to do the rainbow puppy. That was the first time I did that and I really like how it turned out. But you do need an airbrush gun to be able to do that, which is linked in the description. I, you could probably do it with dust and try to shade it in that way, but I think it just looks so much better using the airbrush gun. Now, this cake is a seven inch cake. It's, it's two layers torted, <coughs> excuse me, two layers torted into four smaller layers, and it's about like five inches high, and it feeds like 15 to 18 people. So what new techniques did you learn in this video? Let me know below. And you can keep in touch on socials and check out my website. Everything is listed in the description. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. Don't be so serious. <laughs> I'll see you on the next one. Bye.